mechanisms in the eye. There are normal defense mechanisms in the eye in the form of what? First the bony organ. First the bony organ. We did not allow the uh, any uh, anything to traumatize the eye. Okay? Then the lips, then are the lips. Lips. Then are the then are the lips, then are the lips. By the blinking action, by the blinking action, they prevent anything going by going blink action of the eyelids. Then we have the eyelash. Then we have the eyelash. They prevent any anything coming into the eye, like dust or anything that that will hurt the consistency. Then we have the cordial ear fill. Cordial ear fill. Ear fill has some antibacterial. They have some like the form of lysozyme A or lactoferrin. They have some antibacterial properties. They have some antibacterial properties which prevent any infection to the eye. Okay? And there are more defense mechanisms than the lateral system. That's the lateral system. So tears are orange form and they are green. Yeah? So they are washed out of the anything which goes into the eye. So there are some defense mechanisms which are uh, important. And the most important defense mechanism is the intact body of the teeth. Intact body of the If there is a breach in the body of the teeth, that will create a nice spot infection. That will allow the bacteria to go into the cornea. If the epithelium is intact, there is less likely anything to go into the cornea. Because the epithelium has a very tight junction. Epithelium has a very tight junction. It is a what type of epithelium it is? It is a stratified sclerosis, non keratinized. It is stratified sclerosis, non keratinized. So it is already a stratified epithelium with a in that basic average, what's called the woman's memory. So, in that order, epithelium is the most important defense mechanism which prevents the any intraocular or intracorneal infection. Next. So, the, there are some predisposing factors. There are some predisposing factors. There are some predisposing factors which can lead to bacterial corneal infection. What are the predisposing factors? Predisposing. Most important the trauma. Most important the trauma. Something hits the eye, it causes corneal abrasion. It causes corneal abrasion. Or it causes corneal uh, discontinuity, a few discontinuity. So that can get infected. That can get infected. What else can cause? Contact lenses. Those who are wearing contact lenses. If they are putting the contact lenses, they can be sharp edge or they are not able to put it properly or that's contaminated, that's not hygienic so that can also lead to sin so prolonged contact and viewers or at high risk of bacterial corneal ulcers and in US where the use of contact lenses is very high this is the most common cause of bacterial corneal ulcers so in India in, in the use of bacterial the contact lenses is slightly lesser than the European countries so Bacterial ulcer due to contact lenses is slightly less in India because of infrequent use. Then there are some predisposing factors like lip problems, like the lip problems. If you have atropium, if you have atropium, or you have atropium, you have atropium, lip flap, or lip thin, intro atropium, lip thin words. If the lip goes inwards, what will happen? Less than the cornea, less than the cornea, they will cause the female discontinuity. They will cause the female discontinuity. And that is the discontinuity in the ulcers. Then we have one more that is called the lack of thermosis. That is called lack of thermosis. When it happens, the lip becomes loose. They become loose because there is called glass paralysis. There is called glass paralysis. It happens in which condition? That is called facial paralysis. That's what the agent of the pencils. Once the lip becomes loose, the eyelids do close during sleep. Eyelids do close during sleep. And you have sort of uh, exposure characters. That's called 
exposure, so the golden exposure. When you close during, what happens during the sleep? The eyeball rolls up. I won't, I won't rolls up. And the, uh, this closes the cornea. This closes the cornea completely. So once the lips are not able to close the eyes properly, the cornea remains exposed. Lower part of the cornea. Lower part of the cornea remains exposed. That can get infected. That can get infected. So lack of thermos is one more cause of the bacterial cornea. That's one more cause of the bacterial cornea. So, one more important is the, any infection in the eye. Any infection in the eye. Suppose there is a sac infection. There is a sac infection. Like a sac infection. That can be a nice one. That can be, which can go into the conjectural sac. Which can go into the conjectural sac. Which can infect the cornea. Because there is a persistent source of infection. That is, persistent source of infection. So necrosystites, that is the blockage of the energy, nasal nasal can be a uh, cause of bacterial cornea ulcer. Yes. So if there is problem with the ear film, if there is problem with the ear film, as I, as I told you, that ear film has some antibacterial properties. It has some antibacterial properties. If ear film is not Good, or it is there is the deranged tear film, or the tear film does not because with every bleed, the tear film is surface from the body. So, if there is a problem in that, there is a deficiency of the tears like a dry eyes, or there is a goblet cell problem, or there is any nebulous gland problem which produces the oily secretion of the tear film. So, all that this can lead to less deficiency metabolism. That can lead to less defense mechanism and the body is prone to the infection. Body is prone to the infection. Similarly, any dry eyes, and like what happens in the Stephen Johnson syndrome or the any ocular burn or plus keratopathy, which will affect the body directly. What ocular burn? It will any any algae will injure the body the feeling. What we call by blood keratopathy? Blood keratopathy is the corneal edema. This is a corneal edema. There are vesicles in the cornea. There are vesicles in the cornea. Due to endothelial dysfunction. Due to endothelial dysfunction. This will they will rub the they will rub the cell dysfunction. So these all things will cause a uh, lead to corneal. They will lead to the corneal bacterial corneal muscle. So about the this formula, the contact lens I have talked to you, about this. And most important one more fact in the contact lens is once you put in the cornea, it causes cornea hypoxia. Because as you know, cornea one of the oxygen supply is the atmospheric air. It is the atmosphere. What are the other two sources? Atmosphere from the inside. Then third. Peritimbal capillaries. Peritimbal capillaries is the source. Then there can be a local immune suppression. There can be a local immune suppression. If somebody is putting steroid drops, if somebody is putting steroid drops, so it causes an immunosuppression in the eye locally. It causes so steroid local use, topical use in the eye to dispose a person to the infection. Okay? So, steroids predispose eye to the infection. What are the other things steroids can cause? Cataract. It can cause glaucoma. Glaucoma, cataract, and corneal infection is the third important thing. Though topically, the glaucoma is more. Topically, glaucoma is more. And systemic steroids or oral steroids cause more of cataract formation. They cause more of cataract. But most people go that way to glaucoma, but topical has been seen more for the glaucoma. And systemic is more more for the
system is move or the scatter. Then any ocular surgery, any ocular surgery, get back, lacet or this, that can be supposed to be corneal ulcer. Why? Especially the lacet part, actually the lacet part. This is, uh, once you make it flat for the lacet, why we make it flat for the this cutting of the corneal nerves. This is cutting of the corneal nerves. What is treatment of the corneal nerves? The epithelial turnover becomes less. Epithelial turnover becomes less. So corneal nerves are very important in formation of an epithelium. What's called that? That's called what? So neural transmitters are also important for maintaining the corneal epithelium. And there is some problem with <coughs> neurotransmitters in the body that can lead to neurotrophic keratitis. Neurotrophic keratitis. So once there is any treatment in the corneal epithelium, as I told you, that is a nice spot, bacterial corneal system. Next. So systemic factors we know. Systemic factors we know, like someone is very weak, malnutrition. So that will cause more bacterial problems. Somebody has diabetes, that's an immunodeficiency. That's an immunodeficiency. That will cause bacterial problems. Somebody has AIDS, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. As you know, that's a worldwide high priority at this time. High priority. So same thing about the chronic alone. Chronic? Chronic? Oh my god, I'm throwing this one. Of course I'm throwing this one. This is why I'm throwing this one. You should not have entered like this. Why should I enter like this? Others, but these three you remember: corneal bacteria, diphtheria, 
जैसे ये मेन स्ट्रेंग थी एंड दिस इज ग्लू Raised margin. There you have raised margin. 
but in the state of regression, they will become smooth. They will become smooth. The raised margin will decrease. The edema will decrease. Raised margin will decrease. Edema will decrease. And the base of ulcer will become smooth. Then, state of regression, it can lead to state of psychiatrization. State of psychiatrization. What is state of psychiatrization? Fibrosis. Because the liver joint vessel, there will be enclosed ulceration. They will run, they will infiltrate the ulceration. Once they will go, the inflammation will go, they will be remodeling. There will be remodeling of the cornea. But that remodeling is irregular. Normally, cornea is a regular pattern of operation, which leads its to, to, to transparency. Once they irregularly develop collagen, that can lead to scarring. That can lead to scarring. Once scarring will lead, what is the scarring called? Psychiatrization. What are different types of psychiatrization in the cornea? There are three types. How I many? What's called nebula? What's called nebula? What's called nebula? Second is called macula. Second is called Nebula and third is called Luco. Third is called Luco. Nebula means a slight cornea opacity. Nebula is called macular gas. Then the nebula. And leucoma is the densest white opacity. That is the densest white opacity. So somebody can ask you, what are the different psychiatrization results in the cornea? You can tell it is nebula, it is nebula, and it is leucoma. It is leucoma. Next. So you can see this, so I have already told you this. Next. 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 So this is the hypogeon here. You can see this is a level here. Okay? This is a high level and this is this. This is the anterior chamber. This is not in the corner. Next. 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 So we come to the little pictures. How the patient will present us. How the patient will present us. First is the how much is the relevant organism? How much is the suppose it is pseudomonas? Suppose it is pseudomonas. It will be a rapid also. With the six high hours, the body will be white. You understand? So that's a very dangerous type of organism. Okay? So time is will be necessary to Then, suppose you have some low grade infection, like streptococcal viridans or streptococcal lumen, maybe you have more time. Okay? It will progress very slowly. It will progress very slowly. Then, the duration of infection, I know, because of the, these things define the duration of infection, the virulence of the then the, whether the, 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 the way we told more nutrition is an immunodeficiency. If there is a localized immunodeficiency in the eye, or there are acute abrasions, or some prior corneal disease, that will lead to more quick progression of the corneal ulcer. Next, steroids I told you. Once you put the steroids, that predisposes the corneal ulcer. Next, uh, now the patient. The patient comes to your OPD, he enters the OPD. What will be like? What will be his picture? What he will complain? <coughs> First of all, important will be spasm of the lips. There will be spasm of the lips. Like this. Because there is an infection happening in the eye. This is called peripheral spasm. That's called peripheral spasm. This is in contrast to a frontal cornea ulcer. This is in contrast to a frontal cornea ulcer. Why the eye is open? Because frontal or low virulence organisms. They are low virulence, they are slow growing. They are slow growing. But bacteria are fast growing. So but bacterial cornea ulcer causes a bit of spasm. Then you can have the blurring of media. Because cornea is affected, cornea is a 
डोर टू रिविजन इज इट डोर ड्रिप ट्रांसपेरेंट डोर टू रिविजन सो वंस द ट्रांसपेरेंट डोर इज एफेक्ट इट विल कॉज ब्लरिंग ऑफ विजन एस्पेशली इफ दिस इज सेंट्रल कॉर्नर लेंस इफ दिस इज सेंट्रल इन द ऑप्टिकल जूम इन वाइल फ्रॉम द लाइट स्केल टू द व्यू इट विल कॉज अ ब्लरिंग ऑफ विजन मे बी इफ यू ट्रीट द पेरिफेरल कॉर्नर लेंस इट मे नॉट कॉज दैट मच डिविजन ऑफ विजन थर्ड इट्स पेन थर्ड इज pain pain as you know from the corner oscillation the nerve will be exposed nerve will be exposed so the one thing is the irritation of the nerve it will cause the severe corneal pain and that can also lead to the watering of the eye watering of the eye it leaves the focus better and watering photophobia pain because of the oscillation because of the nerve the you will have a photophobic sensation you will not like that light should penetrate into the eye then the last is the discharge loss the discharge because discharge is very important because it is a bacterial infection it will lead to what it will lead to pus formation it will lead to pus formation so what is not lead to pus formation We we have a different state for the nerves. Suppose it's allergy. Suppose it is allergy. That will lead to mucus discharge. That will need not lead to the pus discharge. Okay. So pus discharge is very important part of bacteria or colon or bacteria or a bacterial colon ulcer. But there are other things. Suppose patients with bacterial conjunctivitis. That will not lead to pus formation. You understand? So. If this is bacterial conjunctivitis, it will also lead to pus formation. If it, you have allergic conjunctivitis, it will lead to more mucus formation. But if it's a bacterial corneal ulcer, you will have corneal lesion. You will have corneal lesion. What will not be present in bacterial conjunctivitis? Okay. So bacterial conjunctivitis corneal will be clear. There will be no ulceration. There will be no ulcer. Next. Is it clear what the symptoms are too? Remember also, peripheral spasm. One, diminution of vision. Two, two photophobia and pain. Third, and the watering and the colonic discharge. So these five are symptoms of the patient. These five are the symptoms of the patient. Then, then the work. Then the work. How will you go with it? One patient then in a mobility call or call an ulcer, bacterial or call an ulcer. What we should do? So we will ask any history, local eye, that is here previously any watery or any eye disease, like we have seen ectopia or endopia or contact lens use, any diagnosis type. It's the local history. Is it? What I told the physician is that yes. So for some reason contact lens use, you need to come to your mind because of that. Somebody has some trauma. It will come to your mind. It will just happen to the trauma. Somebody has a chronic ectopia type, which is leading to pus formation in the lateral side. You will tell because of this coronal ulcer because of that. Somebody has diabetes. Okay, so you can tell this is immunodeficiency. Somebody has been prescribed by 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 pharmacist by uh, the tailor of the drugs. He has prescribed some steroids. What do you need to go? They have some eye problem. They go to a pharmacist. What they call it? A pharmacist. He prescribes them dexamethasone. He prescribes them just because they have itching in the water, and because of that, they land in bacterial corneal ulcer. So, quite is very really problematic part of the ophthalmology because patient does not know what I am saying. He does not know. He does not have any idea. So, he gets into problem. So, as you know, steroids. Decrease symptoms. They decrease condition. They decrease immune. They will decrease uh, redness, or they will decrease. Um, well, symptomatically, patient will be better. Symptomatically, patient will be better. But he will lead to bacterial coronal ulcer. He will lead to fungal coronal ulcer. He will lead to glaucoma. He will lead to cataract. He does not understand that. And most of these pharmacists or these tailors give these uh, steroids for allergies. For Allergy, and when these people get allergy, go like this, but they don't know the complications. What they have. Next, 
Then medical history, you know that diabetes, immunodeficiency, diabetes are the same with the same condition. So once we have seen the corneal ulcer, we have seen it, corneal ulcer, what we have to do? First we will see where is the ulcer. Where is it? Ulcer. So ulcer, we will mark to size. We will mark this size. Then we will mark its Mm, uh, the infiltration error, infiltration technique. Okay? There are two things. One is ulcer, other is infiltration. Infiltration is around the ulcer. Infiltration is around the ulcer. So, size of the ulcer is very important in its severity. In its bigger the ulcer, more severe is the bacterial problem. And the depth. And the and the depth, how deep it is. Does it involve only a feeling? Does, does it uh, involve momentum? Does it involve um, speed of the stroma? Does it involve middle, middle stroma? Does it go deep into the deep stroma? So that will tell us about the severity of the corneal ulcer. So size and the depth of the, of the ulcer is to be established. Especially in size. Suppose if you have a four level, one center, five level vertical, you have to measure how much is the ulcer. So once you start the treatment, you will see whether the size is decreasing or increasing. If it is increasing, that means it's not responding to the treatment. If it is decreasing, that means it is responding to the treatment. So, size, shape, depth, margin, flow, that all for you, you will see. That I will go to go the dolphins release, they can go to the anterior test. That, that they can go to the anterior test. Cause hypopion. Cause hypopion. What is good about this hypopion? It's mobile. It is mobile. Number seven, it is the only part of the body which is strong. It is strong. So it's not a polymorphic process. There are no bacteria in this. Okay? So it is the only part in the body which is dry. Remember this. All parts of the body is to be drained because that's infected. This part is not infected. This is reactionary. This is reactionary. Because it's all, uh, it, it is composed of only polymorphonuclear sites, no bacteria. It does not consist of any bacteria. And one more thing, what can happen because of this IX, pupil will become small, mere. That's one more sign of this bacterial of corner person. And one more thing, the IX becomes muddy. IX becomes muddy. So you will measure the size of the corn, bacterial corner person, you will measure the size of the bacterial corner person, you will have a hypopion, you will have a muddy IX, and you will have a mere too. You have it? We want to see. What about the condition? Redness in the eye. What type of redness it causes? It causes circumcorneal condition. It causes circumcorneal condition. Circum? Circumcorneal condition. Yes, that means around the limbs. Around the limbs. What are the different causes of circumcorneal circumcorneal condition? Like this. What are the different causes? One is bacterial corner ulcer. Can you move? Uvites. Uvites is one more cause. Uvites is third cause. Acute angel fluid glaucoma. These are the three most important causes of certain corneal condition. Repeat. Bacterial corner ulcer. Uvites. I have a cyclite and third is acute endoprogen problem. Then we can do a fluorescent screen. Then we can do a fluorescent screen. That will tell us about a failure. Then we can do an actual screening to see whether the LRT is waiting or not. Because that is the disposition of it. It's the disposition for the corneal ulcer. Then we will do even a corneal sensation. For it, if there are degrees sensation, as I, as I told you, decrease corneal sensation, 
it leads to more or real ulcers because of the affliction of nerves. So, again, the severity, somebody asked the severity degree of corneal ulcers. As I told you, signs of ulcer is very important. If it is less than 2 mm, mild. If it is between 2 to 5, it is moderate. If it is greater than 5, it is severe. So there is that. If it is less than 20 percent, it is mild. If it is 20 to 50, it is moderate. If it is greater than 50, it is severe. Then, stromal infiltration. If it is in the superficial stroma only, it is mild. If it is the mid stroma, it is moderate. If it is the deep stroma, it is severe. Then the similar involvement is the most important. If it involves the similar, it is the serious. It will not happen in the mild or moderate. Next. Then you have some special characters. So no corneal ulcer is no corneal morphology is specific for this diagnosis. You cannot tell this is the shape of the ulcer. Now this is this diagnosis. Then staph or zero. But generally speaking, suppose staph or is it forms the central old type of ulcer. It forms the central old type of ulcer. <coughs> Next. Then suppose pneumococcal. It forms a grayish type of ulcer or spreading type of ulcer with a hypopure. With a hypopure. So hypopure is two, two ulcers. One is pneumococcal, other is pseudomonas. Other is pseudomonas. Pneumococcal or pseudomonas. Next. This is suppose a, again a sort of a ulcer. There is a big ulcer, okay, with a hypopion, big hypopion. <coughs> it can be either a new pokemon or a pseudomonas. Next. Then pseudomonas is a very spreading ulcer. As I told you, it is a very dangerous type of organism. It spreads with a greenish uh, or greenish type of discharge. It is a galaxically a greenish type of discharge. With a, uh, uh, with a hypopure, with a hypopure, with a greenish discharge, with a grey or green type of ulcer, which spreads very fast, with patient deteriorates with a whole five hours. And it can lead to whole wiping out of the body. Next. This is very uh, less, it is a sort of a low grade organism. It happens in very dense. It is a lamellar characteristic. It happens during lasting for this. There are some commences going below the flap, which can cause this type of uh, needle like needle like opacities. This but very less common. Next. Next. So other 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 organisms like I can see E. coli, what are the endometriosis family? They cause a wide range type of opacity. Okay? Next. Next. There is a complication of corneal ulcer. What can lead to the complications of corneal ulcer? Complications of corneal ulcer, it can go B. It can go B. What can go B? One is called the desperacy of That called desperacy. What is that desperacy of That is the bus gene. Why? Why is the bus gene? Because the bus gene, because once the corneal is destroyed, once the corneal is destroyed, the desmond membrane is elastic membrane. It's an elastic membrane. It bulks under pressure. It bulks under pressure. Bowman membrane does not have elastic, but the desmond has an elastic. So once the bacterium, bowman, stroma is destroyed, you have only desmond membrane here. It bulks. So that's called desmond C. If there is a high um, coughing or sneezing or this, that can happen. That can lead to perforation. That can lead to perforation. So let's get to see. Then the perforation. Next. Perforation of the ulcer. So uh, perforation. What can lead to perforation of the ulcer? What can lead to? So there will be leakage of the ice. There will be leakage of the ice. The ice will get adherent to the perforation. Ice will get adherent to the perforation. And once this cornea uh, uh, heats, from the leukoma. It forms the leukoma. And that is called adherent leukoma. That is called adherent leukoma. Why adherent leukoma? Because the ice attached to the body. Ice attached to this effect. 
that's called adherent glucose. One more complication can lead to suppose the cornea becomes weak. Cornea becomes weak. It bulges for it. It bulges for it. That's called keratoactasia, like keratoconus. Right? Keratoconus, that's called keratoactasia. Or one more is that it's called a staphyloma. It will call it staphyloma, bulging of the cornea adherent. In that body cornea, we have some human tissue in part straight. We have some human tissue, and because the definition of staphyloma is what? It is the ectatic psychiatrics. It is the ectatic psychiatrics of the outer coat of the body. That involves what? Cornea and similar. That involves in the in the human tissue is in part straight. So let's go to see one, psychic perforation, third, adherent glaucoma. And fourth, anti staphylone. Okay, so those are the complications of the cornea ulcer. Once it is perforation, now the infection can go into the eye. It can cause what? Endophthalmitis. It will cause endophthalmitis. So that one more complication. Once the once there is perforation and there is uh, this, the cornea will become adherent to this. Cornea and eye will become very close. Okay, okay. it will be tight. There will be tight. There will be a lenticular tight. Lens can tight the cornea. And once the lens is tight, the cornea will be cataract formation. There will be cataract which can be one more complication. Once there will be cataract formation, the peripheral eyes and the cornea can tight. It can lead to peripheral and tear sign. That can lead to second degrowth. That can lead to second degrowth. So if we have to read the uh, complication, that's what we see. Perforation, okay, anterior keratinectasia, then the anterior staphylum, then the endophthalmites, okay, then the cataract formation, then the secondary endothelial glaucoma. Next. That I told you, it can lead to endothelmites. Anterior staphylum all the time. So investigation system, you can do some investigation like uh, LV, TLC, TLC, blood sugar, like that system. Then the topic of the very important thing is taking corner spray. Is taking it? Corner spray. We put the patient as well then, though not many people are doing it, but it is the idea. It is the idea. So we spray the cornea, we spray the cornea, and then we do grand screen, then we do we can do this for staining, okay? So you know we can do ginza staining, or and then we can culture. Then we can culture on what we do? Blood level, okay? Chocolate level, blood level, chocolate level, blood level, chocolate level, and several hours video, okay? Even drops for anaerobic organisms. So different culture media. We can inoculate. You will see this video, short video. You can see how the separating is done. Separating is done by the mouth of the ulcer and the base of the ulcer. This is one of the body surgeons which have put this. Then we can do an antibiotic sensitivity test also, which will tell us. So these are the things we need: the culture media, we need the slides, and we need the blade. We need the blade, slides, culture media, and blade. So we can do a KOH test for fungus. KOH test for fungus. The gangrene stain, culture sensitivity, and grain stain at this part. This is how to take it. You take it from the blade, from the edge of the cornea, edge of the ulcer. Okay? Once you take this, then you put it on this. Then you can put KW on this or then screen on this. Then you label it. You put the patient's MRD number and patient's name. 
and Hacrophenius, one dose. Then one more antibiotic like for vancomycin, some people give it. But if the vancomycin is more uh, active against lightning, then I want to make Okay, so the concentration is usually 50 mg per ml. The amicacin is also in the range of 10 to 20 mg per ml. Okay, 
reconstruction, similar involvement, or you it can uh, <coughs> or endothermite. In that case, you give simple crossing 750 milligram B. 750 milligram B. Then you have other modalities of treatment. Suppose uh, you can do a debridement of ulcer, or you can do a cauterization of ulcer. Okay, this one more and first CPR collagen crosslink. That's called collagen crosslink. That is done on keratoforms to strengthen the collagen. To strengthen the what is done in that? We put the riboflavin in the eye. We put riboflavin in the eye. Then we put ultraviolet A light in the eye. That strengthens the collagen. It increases the bonds between the collagen. It, becomes of, uh, it makes the cornea more stiff. So this collagen cross linking has been seen also it kills the battery. It kills the battery. So CTR is the latest modern of treatment for battery corneal ulcer. Eight sentence but that's all. Suppose that now corneal ulcer is not responding. Corneal ulcer is not responding. What can you cause? First is the wrong time. Suppose you are treating battery corneal ulcer. At least it didn't happen to be fungal. So it will not respond to antibiotics. Number two, second is if it, there is a foreign body in the cornea. If there is a foreign body in the cornea, unless you don't remove that body, unless you don't remove that foreign body, it will not respond to the treatment. Suppose you are putting an antibiotic, the organism is not sensitive to that. Okay, so it will not again respond to that. So, antibiotic sensitivity test is at and also important. And number four, most important, if you have necrocystitis, you are not treating that. You are not treating necrocystitis. Because you have to remove the sac or you have, you have to do a uh, DCR type of surgery, that is just a rhinoceros, in order to remove the source of infection. Then only patient will respond to the treatment. That's all. Thank you.